Welcome back. Last segment, we discussed satellites in low Earth orbit, or LEO. This segment will move farther out and discuss satellites orbiting in medium Earth orbit, MEO, or MEO. So coming back to this animation of satellites orbiting Earth, medium Earth orbits are defined between 2,000 and 35,000 kilometers above the Earth's surface. This is starting to get pretty far away. So instead of a few hours drive in our car that goes straight up, we're talking about hundreds of hours of driving. Medium Earth orbits are also a far larger region of space compared to LEO. But what's interesting here is that there are way fewer satellites orbiting in this region. For comparison, there are currently over 6,000 satellites in LEO orbits compared to roughly 200 in MEO. And furthermore, those thousands of low Earth orbit satellites have tons of different functions from imaging and remote sensing to providing broadband internet. Satellites in medium Earth orbits have historically at least had a single purpose, navigation. And for the United States, navigation means the Global Positioning System, or GPS. So to explain both why there aren't many satellites in medium Earth orbits, and why most satellites in this region are navigation, we need to take a step back and take a look at the environment around the Earth. And specifically, we need to talk about the Earth's magnetic field. Ugh, right? OK, so what do we know about the Earth's magnetic field? So if I take out a compass, you'll know that the needle will point towards the north. This is because the Earth's core acts like a gigantic magnet, and the compass needle is aligning itself along the magnetic field lines. And for any magnet, you should imagine that there are these magnetic field lines connecting the north and south poles. And if a little piece of magnetized metal, like the compass needle, or particle, like an electron or proton, hits a magnetic field, they get funneled along these lines. OK, so what does this have to do with us? Well, our sun is constantly emitting energetic particles, protons and electrons. When these particles come close to the Earth, they are funneled into certain regions by the Earth's magnetic field. These regions of radiation are called the Van Allen belts. These regions are pretty tough places for satellites because the radiation messes with the delicate onboard electronics. And it's possible to harden electronics against this radiation, but it costs a lot more money. And things like imaging cameras really still struggle in these regions. The Van Allen belts start at 1,000 kilometers above the Earth's surface. That is, low Earth orbit satellites are somewhat shielded from this nasty radiation stuff. The Van Allen belts extend all the way out to 60,000 kilometers, but the radiation in the inner region from about 1,000 to 12,000 12, kilometers is particularly challenging, and most satellites just completely avoid this region. So that explains why there are far fewer satellites in medium Earth orbit as compared to low Earth orbit. It's just a difficult place to be. So let's next focus on why most satellites in this region are navigation satellites. So in order to avoid the worst of the Van Allen belts, satellites in medium Earth orbit tend to hang out at about 20,000 kilometers from the Earth's surface. Let's use Kepler's third law to determine the orbital period at this distance. So calling up the equation that we've used before, a cubed equals p squared m, we can compute the orbital period, p, given the distance of a medium Earth orbit satellite. OK, so from the last segment, we calculated that an orbital period of 95 minutes corresponds to objects at 550 kilometers above the Earth's surface. So a satellite at 20,000 kilometers should have at least a few hours uh, orbital period, if not more. And doing this calculation, and again, we'll provide the details in a deeper dive at the end of the module, a satellite at medium Earth orbit orbiting at 20,000 kilometers has an orbital period of 12 hours. So 12 hours is kind of interesting. The Earth rotates every 24 hours. So if I'm sitting on Earth and looking up, unlike a low Earth orbit satellite, which just zooms across my horizon quickly in a few minutes, a medium Earth orbit satellite will take hours to move across the sky, and it'll come back to the same point twice per day. And this is a particularly useful property if you're trying to determine your location. OK, so in medium Earth orbit, there are several different sets of satellites that are dedicated to navigation. 
The U.S. runs a fleet of about 30 or so satellites orbiting in medium Earth orbit that we rely on for an increasingly large set of tasks. These are the GPS or Global Positioning Satellites. And there's a pretty good chance that you've used this system probably even today. So if you look down at your phone right now and you ask like say Google Maps to find your current location, your phone is using signals from some of these GPS satellites orbiting 20,000 kilometers away. Like, whoa, right? So let's figure out how GPS actually works. So what a GPS satellite itself does is actually sort of simple. Each satellite knows two things very well. One, it knows its position in space precisely. And two, each satellite has an incredibly accurate clock. So that's it. It knows where it is and what time is it. And the satellite is very proud of this and is constantly broadcasting a radio signal with this information. So like, hey, it's 5 o'clock and I'm over here. And a second GPS satellite is like, hey, it's 5.15 and I'm over there, and so on. And so for the curious, GPS uses a few different radio frequencies between 1.2 and 1.57 gigahertz to broadcast this information. OK, so now I am sitting somewhere on Earth. I have a phone or some device that's designed to passively pick up these GPS radio frequencies. So suppose there's a GPS satellite doing its thing, and exactly at 5 p.m., the satellite sends out its usual message saying, hey, it's 5 p.m. and I'm here. That message travels from the satellite outwards towards me at the speed of light. And although light travels very fast, it still has a finite speed. And so my phone receives that GPS signal, hey, it's 5 p.m., but it took light a finite time to travel, way less than a second, and we have to take into account relativistic effects, but we're just gonna forget all that for right now. I can use that difference in time, the difference between when the satellite says it broadcast a signal versus when I receive the signal, to determine the distance to the satellite. That is, distance equals velocity times time. I know the time it took the message to travel to me and I know the velocity at which it traveled, the speed of light. So I can compute a distance. And that's amazing, right? I can measure my distance to a satellite in medium Earth orbit. And because the satellite knows its position very accurate, I can start to figure out my own position relative to this point. OK, but here's the problem. I know I'm a certain distance away from that satellite. And I know that this, what the satellite's position is. But I don't know in which direction I am. That means I could actually be anywhere in a sphere around that satellite. Here's the cool thing. If I can detect the signal of another GPS satellite and do that same calculation, I'll know that I'm on a different sphere centered on that satellite. And these two spheres only intersect in a small region. And now if I have a third satellite, those three spheres intersect in a single unique position. And all of a sudden, I know where I am. I've triangulated my position using three GPS satellites, all in medium Earth orbits. This all relies on precise, accurate clocks, both in the satellites and on my phone. So on GPS satellites, there are actually multiple atomic clocks which creep incredibly precise and accurate time. The clock on your handheld phone, not so much. Actually, it's pretty cheap, and it's not really up to the task. And so, in practice, GPS requires four satellites, with four satellites accounting for the error in your phone's timekeeping. So GPS requires four satellites in view at all time. And stepping back for a second, this is why GPS satellites are placed in medium Earth orbits. We require at least four satellites in view at all time. If GPS satellites were in low Earth orbit, we would need thousands of GPS satellites to ensure anyone on Earth could see four of them at any one time. In medium Earth, we only need a few tens of satellites to provide complete coverage. The current GPS satellite network that's run by the US government, specifically the Department of Defense, consists of 32 working satellites right now. Given the orbital position of these 32 satellites, anywhere on Earth will have somewhere between seven and 10 in view. So there's some redundancy built into the system. And this redundancy is super important given the number of systems that rely on GPS. GPS is so like deeply embedded in our lives that it's hard to like even realize where it's being used. So obviously if you're using your phone to get your position on Google Maps or get the directions from your car, you're actively using GPS. 
Ships and airplanes use GPS for navigation, but also for more autonomous functions like docking or autopilot. Farmers use GPS to guide tractors in the field or keep real-time track of their livestock. And all of our financial transactions use the timestamps provided by GPS. The military who developed and maintains the GPS network uses GPS for navigation, but also for weapon systems. And so given both the extensive and sensitive nature of GPS, GPS actually isn't the only game in town. So China has its own system of satellite navigation called Baidu. Russia has its own system of satellites called GLONASS. The European Union has its own system called Galileo. And both India and Japan have satellites which improve navigation coverage in their region. Although there are some receivers that can detect and use signals from multiple satellite navigation systems, most personal phones or car navigation systems only use a single system. I could talk for another couple hours about GPS, but it's probably time to move on. So a few final thoughts. Um, GPS satellites avoid the nastier inner regions of med medium Earth orbit where the radiation environment is most difficult. They're also less sensitive to radiation as compared to imaging cameras. So while medium Earth orbits have historically been dominated by navigation satellites, in the last five to eight years, that's actually started to change, and a few satellites are being launched into medium Earth orbits that have functions beyond navigation. So in the next segment, we'll continue to move further out from Earth and discuss geosynchronous and geostationary orbits.